Joker 2019 is the story of Arthur Fleck, a resident of Gotham's lower class with multiple mental illnesses and a troubled past. Over and over again, this man got bullied and assaulted senselessly. He wanted to put a smile on that face and make the world laugh, but it just wasn't possible for him in the cruel reality of Gotham City. It's a tragic tale that reminds us to look out for one another. A great story that rightfully earned its billion dollars in the box office. It's too bad we aren't saying the same thing about its sequel. This is getting a lot of hate online, and much of it makes sense. This movie is obviously far from perfect. I don't think I've ever seen a sequel so tied to its first movie in my life. Like, the basis of this movie is talking about the events of the last movie. And that combined with the mind-numbing two settings of the film, it's definitely fair to call it boring. Along with that, it's an unnecessary sequel. The original stood on its own two feet perfectly, with no need for more to follow. This movie did not have to exist, and likely only does, because the first one resonated so well with audiences. Even statistically, there's nothing going for it. Like, CinemaScore even ranked it a D, setting it lower than Morbius and Madam Web. Like, what? And those are bad films, dude. Morbius in no way should be taken seriously. And Madam Web is just... No. Our society is in mutual agreement that this was a bad movie. But I'm here to say... Hold on a minute. Joker, Foley Ado has got a story here. I'll get deeper into the criticisms, and that's what we'll be addressing today, but we're gonna start off with its most polarizing aspect. It's a musical. When I think of musicals, obviously studios that are well-versed in that genre come to mind. But outside of them, the genre can be a hit or miss. I think of the trend last December of studios hiding the fact that their films were, in fact, musicals. Joker 2 did not do this. It was actually one of the first known facts about the movie, with the casting of Lady Gaga further contributing to it with her already having this kind of work under her belt. I would say the musical element within Joker 2 is overall good, for it emphasizes how out of touch Arthur Fleck is with reality, and it strengthens the bond between Joker and Harley. And it's actually just entertaining. Both are excellent singers, and it spices things up. Without the musical elements, this movie would almost solely take place within the courthouse in Arkham Asylum, as mentioned earlier. Fairly boring locations. And speaking of Arkham Asylum, I want to talk about a character that's very near and dear to my heart. Batman. Batman and Joker often go hand in hand, with their rivalry standing the test of time and pop culture. Knowing this, there was a clear calling for Batman to be in this film. But that couldn't work for two reasons. Number one, Bruce Wayne is a straight-up child, and number two, I don't want Batman to kick this guy's ass. I feel bad for Arthur Fleck. His life is already a wildly depressing and unfortunate struggle. I don't think watching Batman pummel this dude into the ground would work in the story. Overlooking it all, this second movie begins with our protagonist back in the form of Arthur Fleck. He's troubled, lacking confidence, dead inside, and overall unattractive, an outlier in society. Throughout the movie, he gets reminded of how cool the Joker persona is for him, this confident and outlandish character that gets to do whatever the hell he wants. With Harley drooling over the persona specifically, and the whole cultish fan base to back it up. But then there's the court scene with his friend Gary Puddles from the first movie, where Puddles expresses how he now lives in a constant state of fear thanks to Arthur's Joker persona. Hearing this sentiment, among other things, Arthur realizes that while the persona is him being his troubled best self, it's harming those around him. Therefore, he takes back the mantle of Joker, and here's where things get interesting, that ending. I watched that scene with an open mouth. That shit was shocking. Basically, Arthur Fleck is walking alone in Arkham Asylum to go see a visitor when a fellow inmate comes up to him, an inmate who's been seen throughout the whole movie. The inmate tells him a knock-knock joke and ends it by telling Arthur, you get what you fucking deserve, stabbing Arthur multiple times in the stomach, obviously killing him, and carves a smile into his own face. While I understand the sentiment against it, it kind of worked. This story was bold, controversial as hell, 
and worthy of dividing an audience. So, it instantly reminded me of this. You don't get to rush this. This is a Last of Us 2 situation, y'all. Both are artsy sequels with major talent behind them, and both had pivotal shakeups in their plot lines that twist the events of the original installments. Whether it's good or bad is completely up to the audience, but with me, I saw what they were going for and I'd call it effective. So no, Arthur Fleck is not THE Joker, but it's worth noting that he was a Joker, a struggling man failed by society who created the biggest icon of villainy in the streets of Gotham, and really, entertainment as a whole. Let me know what you think in the comments, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.